Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the lab. This is just going to be a quick little side experiment today. I just have one block that I did something a little crazy with. This is a King Oyster pasteurized hardwood fuel pellet block. And what I did this time is I added some soy peptone during the pasteurization. So soy peptone is a nutrient additive that's used in mycology. If you see my cordyceps video or my liquid culture videos, you know that I like to add it to liquid culture and my cordyceps substrate. It um, makes the mycelium really aggressive, helps with your spawn run, helps with your yields, but I have never tried adding it to sawdust before. So this was a first for me. I chose this king oyster strain because I've grown it a ton of times before. It's very predictable. I've been growing it a long time, a lot of different cycles, so I know how it acts. It behaved a little differently this time. And so I'm attributing that to the presence of the peptone. It seemed to make the mycelium a little more rhizomorphic and aggressive in colonization. I got more fruit bodies than I typically get on my first and second flush. The yields were really nice, definitely towards the higher end of what I typically get with this strain. Maybe not enough to offset the cost of the peptone, but it definitely changed the behavior of the mycelium and the fruiting cycle. So it's just a food for thought kind of experiment. Maybe if you have a strain and some peptone laying around that you want to play with and just mix it in there, see if it changes the behavior of your strain, might be something fun to play with. And also I did get pretty nice yields. I'm not going to say it was like awesome yields because of the peptone or anything, but it may have bumped them up just a little bit. So I'm definitely not saying like you should be adding peptone to all of your substrate from now on. Uh, don't think that because of this video, this is just kind of a little food for thought experiment. So let me flip the camera around and show you guys what I got going on. This is a King Oyster block. This is my Pleurotus Orengai strain from Gary at Fresh From The Farm Fungi. If you guys have seen my other videos, you've seen me experiment and grow this strain. It's an awesome King Oyster strain, very resilient, high yielding. So I decided to try it for this experiment. Uh, this is my standard fruiting block recipe, just pasteurized hardwood fuel pellets. I did add 5% wheat bran, but what I changed up is when I added the boiling water to do my pasteurization, I mixed in a tablespoon of soy peptone. And soy peptone is a nutrient additive that's used in mycology. If you guys have seen my cordyceps videos or my liquid culture videos, you know I add a little bit to my LC and I use it as a supplement in my cordyceps grows, and it just does awesome things. It's basically like cocaine to mycelium. It just goes crazy. You actually have to watch sometimes how much you add or you can get too much mycelium. So I wanted to see what would happen if I added it to substrate. I wanted to see one, if it would cause contamination, which with this block it did not. And I also wanted to see if it would affect my yields and also the behavior of the mycelium. So yields, I don't know yet because it's just starting to pin. I'll zoom in here in a second. You can see all those pins on top. It's just pinning. I'm going to move it into the fruiting chamber. But I have already noticed some differences in the mycelium growth. So let me change the camera angle here and zoom in and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. So I'm zoomed in here on the corner of the block and hopefully you guys can see it. It's a little more difficult to see now that the block is really whiting up, but there's little dense center patches of mycelium where the grain kernels germinated. And from each of those dense little points, it looks like almost like a star, like there's these fingers of thick rhizomorphic mycelium branching off from that center point. So what happened was when the mycelium first jumped off the grain and started growing into the substrate, it got really thick and rhizomorphic as it radiated out from those grain kernels. So I zoomed in a little bit, maybe you guys can see it a little better. Those dense white spots with just those fingers of thick white rhizomorphic mycelium branching off of them. That was really noticeable. I've grown this strain a lot and I've never seen that before, so I'm guessing that's a result of the peptone but we will see if it's going to change anything as far as yield goes. So I'm going to go ahead and move this block to fruiting. You can see I have pins all over the place. I have some pins on the side, pins on top. So we'll just keep an eye on it, see if anything cool happens with the yield, and I'll check back in a few days. 
It's been about a week, guys, since I cut the top of our King bag off on our Soy Peptone Infuse HWFP block. And our pins are developing nicely. I'm actually noticing even more pins than usual, which Kings, they always totally blow up with pins, like way more than they can nutritionally support. But this block seems to be taking it to the next level even, so... What I'm noticing is that not only is it making more pins, but it seems like it's putting energy into more pins as well. So not only is the surface completely covered in pins, but it's actually nutritionally investing in more than just like half a dozen pins. So normally when I grow this without the peptone, It'll pin up all over the place and then maybe six, seven, eight fruits will actually start to develop and mature. Frame it up a little better here. So you can see that there's probably, I want to say at least a couple dozen, maybe 25, 30 pins that are really developing and don't look like they're going to abort. So this is going to be interesting to see. It may be that the peptone is just causing it to pin more and you know nutritionally invest in more pins but it may not be able to support those so i'm just going to let these keep growing i uh, just have them going in my sideways tub setup because it's just a single block it's not really worth firing up the fruiting chamber so i'm just letting them rock in here we'll check back in another week or so all right guys it's time to finish up this video it's picking time for our king oyster block with our soy peptone additive. I'm interested to see what the final yield is going to be. The pin set, I would say, was better than without the peptone. I have more harvestable mushrooms here. With my previous experiments not using peptone, I had three or four, maybe five, really big king oyster. Not a nice, even, medium size pin set like this so it's definitely I would say a benefit if you're looking for more medium sized mushrooms with king oyster versus just a few big ones but that could be strain dependent too with this strain I definitely noticed that so I'm going to pick these off I'm going to weigh them and we'll see how it measures up against our blocks where we haven't used Pepto I fruited these in our sideways mono tub fruiting chamber setup that I showed a few videos ago and so if you guys want to fruit some beautiful oysters like this but don't have a nice automated fruiting chamber set up yet check out that video it's a really easy way to fruit some beautiful oysters I will link it in the description to this video a lot of these small pins here are gonna be kinda of squishy they won't have good texture so I'm not gonna weigh those and count them towards our final yield mushrooms it's one of my favorite oysters to eat for sure they have a really firm nice texture even in the stem the whole stems edible you can slice them and almost make like scallops out of them saute them up in butter they turn out really nice all right so we ended up with an even 12 ounces for our first flush that is my best first flush off of a 5% supplemented pasteurized block so far so it does seem like the soy peptone is adding a little bit to our not only our mycelium growth but our yield and i believe my last five percent pasteurized black only yielded around eight nine ounces on the first flush so we got a lot of nice evenly shaped medium-sized fruit bodies out of here and a nice yield so i'm going to finish up this video now i will just update you guys probably in a notification let you guys know how the second flush turned out but so far so good uh, with the peptone experiment here it looks like it does it definitely changed the mycelium growth made it more aggressive and uh, didn't cause any contamination for us 
and looks like it's giving us a nice yield too so I do spawn heavy too I had about a quarter grain spawn for each one of these pasteurized blocks so keep that in mind that if you spawn a little lighter you may run into some contamination I do spawn pretty heavy especially when I'm doing experiments like this I like to because I want to make sure that that mycelium is going to outrace any contamination so I'm going to clean this block all up I'm just going to move it back to our simple sideways monotub style fruiting chamber for the second flush but we're going to call it a video here, guys, so hit me up in comments, let me know what you think, and I will catch you next video.